Hello, it's Dave Fox here, and today I'm going to talk about exposition in film. And I've chosen a brilliant piece of exposition from the movie Jaws. Exposition, as opposed to backstory, which I'll explain in a minute, is that information without which we can't get into the story. And this short scene, it's only 50 seconds long, is a supreme example of how to write it. Old rental yards opening early to prepare the annual seasonal rush. This is WISS. How come the sun didn't used to shine on you? I bought the house in the fall. This is summer. There's somebody feed the dogs. Right. See the kids? It must be in the backyard. In Amity, you say yad. They're in the yard, not too far from the car. How's that? Like you're from New York. So we've just come from the opening scene where Chrissy goes into the water late at night and is attacked and killed by the shark. If you're writing a screenplay, that's a very uh, intense beginning to your film where do you go from there you go to the opposite you go to an extreme of domesticity of family of normality and that normality is going to be challenged in the course of the film but for now in this moment everything is as it should be it's all normal and this scene is so packed with information which is given to us when we don't even notice it. It's just uh, a picture of two people waking up in the morning and uh, about to start their day. But let's look at the ways in which this information has got across. Old rental yards opening early to prepare the annual seasonal rush. This is WISS. How come the sun didn't used to shine on you? I bought the house in the fall. This is summer. There's somebody feed the dogs. Right. See the kids? It must be in the backyard. In the Amity, you say yad. They're in the yard. Not too far from the car. How's that? Like you're from New York. Fish is out of water, no pun intended. And it's very clear, even in this extremely early scene, that these two, oh, especially Chief Brody, they're going to have to draw on some special resources in order to meet what's coming. It's really brilliant how many pieces of information are put across in this 50 second scene. And of course, what makes it so good is that it's disguised. And that's really the secret of good writing. Good writing of exposition is that you shouldn't feel that you're being told something uh, vital it should just slip by effortlessly and Jaws is is uh, a great film for many reasons but one of them is the writing it's economical it's elegant and to the point foreshadowing is a technique that plants an idea in the viewers mind early on a clue as to what will happen later. Again, it has to be finessed, put over in a different context to the one in which it will later re-emerge. Damn it! 
Martin. This is compressed air. Well, what the hell kind of a knot was that? You pulled the wrong one. You screw around with these tanks and they're going to blow up. I'll catch this bird for you, but it ain't going to be easy. Sometimes it's done with great subtlety. I'd like going down the bottom Sometimes not so much. This shark, swallow you whole. Shaking, tenderizing. Down you go. Japanese submarine slammed two torpedoes into our side, Chief. He was coming back from the island of Tinian to Lady. He just delivered the bomb, the Hiroshima bomb. Backstory, as I mentioned before, is when characters describe some event from their past. And it's generally to be avoided because we want to stay in the present moment and see what happens next. But sometimes, as in this magnificent speech in which Quint, played by Robert Shaw, recounts his terrifying ordeal in shark-infested waters, the tale greatly enriches our understanding of his character, but also adds a moment of sombre reflection for our three protagonists as they prepare to finally do battle with the enemy. 1,100 men went into the water. The vessel went down in 12 minutes. Didn't see the first shark for about half an hour. Tiger, 13-footer, you know? You know that when you're in the water, Chief? You tell by looking from the dorsal to the tail. Well, we didn't know. But our bomb mission had been so secret. No distress signal had been sent. They didn't even list us overdue for a week. Very first light, Chief. Sharks come cruising. So we formed ourselves into tight groups. You know, it's kind of like old squares in a battle, like you see in a calendar, like the Battle of Waterloo, and the idea was, shark comes the nearest man, that man, he start pounding and hollering and screaming. Sometimes the shark go away. Sometimes he wouldn't go away. Sometimes that shark, he looks right into you, right into your eyes. You know the thing about a shark, he's got lifeless eyes, black eyes, like a doll's eyes. When he comes at you, he doesn't seem to be living until he bites you. And those black eyes roll over white and then... Oh, then you hear that terrible high-pitched screaming. The ocean turns red and... In spite of all the pounding and the hollering, they all come in and they rip you to pieces. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Whatever kind of writing you're into, my course, The Storyteller Gene, is for you. The link is below. See you next time.